Hey, do you know the difference between these doors, these doors, and these? Yeah, there's quite a few different designs that manufacturers use. And we're gonna learn about all the different car door types and specifically why each are used. So in this video, we're gonna cover eight different types of doors and an honorable mention that comes stock from a manufacturer. Okay, now, now that was really weird and not aftermarket like the ones we've seen like this from time to time. Plus, since we're all familiar with conventional doors or as some rich guys call them, peasant doors, like the ones on this Lamborghini Huracan Performante. In car whose doors open like this, not like this, not like this. I'm just not gonna include them on the list. By the way, it's great to see you guys again. Let's go. Now, first up on this list, I'm gonna include two types of doors that are eerily similar. These here are the Gullwing doors, with the doors being hinged to the roof of the vehicle and opening vertically for easy access to the cockpit. And then you also got the Falcon doors, which also open upwards, but because of a moving roof panel, it actually doesn't need as much space as the Gullwing doors. Now the legendary auto manufacturer Mercedes-Benz made these Gullwing doors absolutely timeless with this car, the W198 300 SL, which at the time was not designed for aesthetic beauty, but rather out of necessity. But when that car was launched in the 50s and people like you and me, well, we weren't around yet, but when people saw this car in the flesh, yeah, that was probably the most beautiful and unique door design of the time. In fact, the design has actually stuck around with the SLS AMG holding true to its heritage. And this time around, it's a huge fashion statement. So now that you know the slight nuances between Falcon and Goldwing doors, which one do you like better? The Tesla or the SLS AMG? Let us know up above. So although this type of door isn't common anymore, it used to be. And I think a lot of us got a taste of how cool suicide doors were because of this famous Lincoln Continental in Entourage. Nowadays, manufacturers don't like to call them suicide doors. Rather, they like to call them rear hinged doors. And believe it or not, this Mazda RX-8 was the first sports car to ever have this type of door design. And I wish this design would catch on with like the Mustang and the Aston Martin Vantage because it makes access to the rear so much easier. And as for cars that you can currently buy today with rear hinged doors, Rolls Royce has got you covered because models like the Phantom Drop Head Coupe lets you open up your door in this extreme unique and rather rare way. And have you ever wondered why they were called suicide doors? Well, there were two reasons. The first is if you were riding in the car and you were to open up the door, it could catch air, which then would increase the likelihood that you may fall out of the car. And the second is if you were getting out of a car that had a rear hinged door and the door was still open and a car were to come by and hit that door. Yeah, I'm not going to paint the picture any more than that. It would suck. So due to safety standards and popular demand, rear hinge doors, suicide doors have really phased out over the past couple of decades. And now it's time for the ideal question of the day. So if you were watching this video and at the end you stepped outside and you found a lottery ticket that won you $100,000 US, what ideal car would you buy and why? Let us know down in the comments. Best comment that we choose will send you an ideal shirt and yeah, let us know. $100,000 US, what is the ideal car that you would buy? These next set of doors were actually built out of necessity by Lamborghini. See, the Countach had an issue. It had such poor rear visibility that you couldn't see out of the back when driving in reverse. So to fix that, they built a door that opened upwards so the driver could back up without the fear of hitting anything. And because Lamborghini has kept using them, they've been affectionately known as Lamborghini doors or Lambo doors for years. And current supercars like their Lamborghini Aventador still use this same style of door today. Now, I totally agree with you guys, they look amazing amazing but they have a big flaw and that is when you open them you got to know what's above you because they open pretty high and if you're not careful you could bang them on a ceiling or something else that's above that you just don't even know is there now because these doors have become so popular over the years aftermarket companies have had a field day with putting them on cars that just don't deserve them. I've seen Corvettes, Mustangs, even Civics have aftermarket scissor doors. I don't know where the taste police is, but 
they need to get there fast. And the reason that they're so popular as an aftermarket is because it's pretty much a plug and play piece. See, because the regular mounting point for conventional doors is the same as scissor doors. So instead of the door rotating out, it now goes up. And because it's that easy, a lot of people that never should have put them on their car have done it. Now these may or may not be my favorite doors ever. And although they look the part, they do have the same shortcomings as scissor doors. See, butterfly doors are like scissor doors, except they open up and then in. And the reason that they do this is it actually gives you a little bit easier access in and out of the car because you're not blocked by some of the door. And the reason they get the butterfly name is because, well, they kind of look like butterfly wings. And again, if you have butterfly doors or scissor doors, you have to make sure that when you're opening them, you have clearance because if you don't, you're gonna bang them into something, which could be tens of thousands of dollars of misery. And and these doors are a lot harder to fake than the scissor doors because of that extra angle that they have going like this. And so that's probably why, because you can't really rip them off. They're my favorite door. <sighs> Dihedral doors. Now, they're a lot like nothing else. Yeah, the way these things open, where they kind of open to the side and then rotate upwards at an angle is really something that we've never seen before or we'll probably never see again. And this door design took a group of talented engineers years to create. And they were able to make something that no other manufacturer has ever replicated. Because these doors are just as cool as the cars that they come on, like this Koenigsegg Ajera R. And if you know one thing about eggs, they're built pretty much fully out of carbon fiber. And so if you park next to a high curb and you open one of these doors, yeah, expect a multi, multi thousand dollar bill because you're gonna damage a door that, well, I don't know if they really even make replacements for. But because this is such an engineering feat, let's let's watch this door open one more time. Yeah, I could watch that all day long. That is one of the most beautiful automotive works of art that, that I've ever seen. And personally, I think that the dihedral doors that come on the egg are about as legendary as the scissor doors that came on the Countach. But that's just one man's opinion. And we got more doors to talk about. Like scissor doors are known as Lambo doors, Swan doors should be known as Aston doors because this type of door can be found on a plethora of Aston Martins, including this DB9. But they're not the only ones to actually use the Swan door. In fact, the Chevy Corvette uses them as well as this Pagani Huayra Roadster. And out of all the door designs on this list, I think that the Swan door might be the most practical. See, sports cars are naturally lower than most cars. And so the doors should open up. And by opening up, they miss objects that they'd otherwise connect with if they open parallel to the ground. And when you look at a swan open its wings, they open up not parallel to the ground as well. So it just kind of makes sense that these doors would be popular on sports cars. I can bet that your friend's mom probably had a minivan with sliding doors. But did you know that they weren't just used for vans? In fact, back in 1954, this Kaiser Darren used sliding doors, specifically to make it easier for occupants to get in and out of the car in tight parking spaces. Now, unfortunately, the trend really didn't catch on with other auto manufacturers. And so sliding doors for passenger cars was really short-lived, except for your minivan and a lot of commercial vehicles like the UPS truck. I personally wish that they'd bring back the sliding doors because I think they're cool, but auto manufacturers aren't watching Ideal Media. At least I don't think they are, but if they are, I love sliding doors. And now it's time for that honorable mention, baby. Back in the day, BMW made an extremely weird BMW and they called it the BMW Isetta or affectionately known as the bubble car. And although it had four seats, it had this really unique front hinged door, which honestly kind of added to the whole clown car look that it already had going for it. Because under the hood, wherever the hood is, there was a nine horsepower engine. Yeah, nine horsepower. And just like sliding doors for the regular passenger car, front hinge doors really didn't catch on and I really don't know why. <laughs> 
I love it when auto manufacturers take plays out of aviation playbooks. And the canopy door is one of the coolest ones that I've ever seen. Look how cool it is for this canopy operation on this fighter jet. It really is next level technology. And in fact, auto manufacturers have been playing around with the canopy idea for decades, where essentially this canopy opens up and off of the car. Now, unlike every other door on this list, you won't really have any issues with obstructions to your door. But if you got the ideal temperature in the car and you open that canopy, it's gonna let all of that out to the elements. And if that vehicle were to roll over, how do you even open the door? I don't think they really thought this through, nor do I think that it was something that was actually gonna catch on and kind of a far-fetched idea, but it was extremely cool nonetheless. And just to think that this could have been the future is a pretty big idea. And if you're ready to switch gears and not talk about doors anymore, but rather cars that will eat supercars for lunch, check out these six Japanese tuner cars that will eat supercars for lunch or check out what YouTube recommends you watch next. Oh, and if you haven't yet, please subscribe, but either way, you can't lose, and as always, keep living that ideal lifestyle.